Welcome back. Our next guest has photographed some of the world's most stunning landscapes throughout his career, but for him, none can quite compare to the beauty of Ireland, something which many of us can agree on after a summer of staycationing. So true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Cork-based photographer Peter Cox joins us on the line now to discuss his latest book, which turns the lens on the beautiful coast of Kerry. Peter, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Peter. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Tell us about the Skelligs, first of all, Peter. That is the focus of this book. Uh, the Skelligs, Islands on the Edge of the World. Obviously, Star Wars, I suppose, being filmed there so recently, uh, gave it worldwide attention. But what makes it so special? Well, it's a combination of a bunch of things, actually. It's uh, first and foremost for me, it's the dramatic landscape. You know, these islands are these pinnacles of rock that just rear up out of the Atlantic uh, very dramatically, very forbiddingly. And uh, they, of course, attracted attention throughout history. And uh, monks settled there in the sixth century and uh, created this monastery that's on the summit of the lower of the two peaks, which is a incredible achievement. There's actually no flat space really on the island and they had to make their own land or their own flat space to build on. Uh, so it's this, when you approach the island, you see this very forbidding wall uh, near the top of the peak, uh, which looks like a, an, a you know, fortification or, or a castle, but it's actually a retaining wall that holds the level ground that the monastery is built on. And then, of course, there's also the uh, there's a pair of lighthouses that were built on the island in the 19th century. Again, an equally impressive engineering achievement. So when you visit these islands, they're they're really awe inspiring. It's the combination of the the nature, uh, the wildlife, the landscape, and the human story that's there for the past um, you know over a, uh, over a millennium. It was, certainly was a passion project for you because it took 10 years, this book, 128 pages of spectacular photographs. I'm interested to hear about the type of photographic equipment that you used to get those photos. And did you spend days uh, over there and staying overnight? Uh, yes, I was lucky enough to be able to stay overnight. Um, and I've I just, because the islands are very inaccessible, because of the difficulty of getting out there, uh, you know, it, it, this project on, on the mainland might have only taken a couple of years, but it took 10 years to do it uh, on the islands. Uh, so it's, uh, the, in terms of the equipment that I used, it's a mix of, of cameras. You know, I've, I've photographed from helicopters, I've photographed from the ground. Um, so I, I use digital cameras I have done for, uh, well, for 20 years or so. And uh, I use a mix of sort of smaller format cameras that are uh, more portable and easier to take with you on a big climb. Uh, and then also larger cameras that are bulkier and give a higher quality result, but uh, can't quite be so portable. We're seeing some, some of your incredible photographs here, Peter. Uh, I think we all fancy ourselves as a bit of a handy photographer these days with all of the tech and the gadgets and the iPhones uh, knocking around. When did photography start for you? Photography started for me uh, when I was fairly young. In a, it was sort of a glancing blow, if you like. Um, my, I was given a gift when I was probably about nine or ten of what was a, a Starsky and Hutch set. It had, you know, like handcuffs and a badge, and it also had a camera in it, a little plastic camera that my parents thought was just a toy and didn't work, but actually it had a roll of black and white film in it. And uh, so I was quietly photographing people on the street outside the house. Uh, with this thing and my parents thought it was just a thing that didn't actually take any pictures mm -hmm. i still have them knocking around someplace oh that's um, brilliant but then you know over years that just uh sort of faded away and it really came back again in the i suppose the early 2000s with the advent of digital cameras i was working in uh, computer systems at the time and i've always been a bit of a gadget uh file and uh i just uh, you know the the gadgetry of it drew me in and then from that uh, i learned that actually the technology isn't the thing that takes the photograph, it's the photographer. So I had to learn how to do that. And uh, so that's kind of where it's led today. So Peter, you were working in the States, I believe at the time when you decided to pick up the camera and perhaps pursue a professional career, which is a real leap of faith because it's a vocation to be a photographer. You have to really love what you do. And you were inspired by your mum to follow your dreams. Is that right? I was, yeah. So I lived in the States for about 10 years and was working in computers there. Uh, about halfway through that period, I picked up the photography as a hobby. And then around the time I left my job in the States and moved back home in the mid-2000s, uh, I decided that it would be something that I would like to do. You know, I wasn't really that happy with my career at the time. 
And I thought, well, maybe I can make something of this photography lark as a sort of a side business, maybe, if I was lucky. And I was, uh, I was working uh, on a photograph, and my mother, who unfortunately had dementia at the time and has since passed, um, but she kind of came into the room and was asking what I was doing in a bit of a moment of lucidity. Uh, and I explained, and she said, uh, wow, you really love that photography, don't you? And I said, yes. And she said, do you think you'd like to do that? I said, you know, I think I would. And she said, well, we'll make sure that you can do that. And it was just that little moment of lucidity and that sort of permission that she gave me to think that this was something that I could do. At the time, I wasn't really thinking it was something that was a viable actual career. And uh, this would flip the little switch in my head that said, you know, actually, this is something that I can actually try to do and try to make work. And of course, that conversation was was so important. Um, you have a whole massive array of international work as well, Peter. We're reading about the polar bears in the Arctic, lava erupting, um, some incredible shots here. Talk us through some of these highlights, Peter. So this is a, this is a polar bear in the Barents Sea in the Arctic. I've, I uh, run workshops when <laughs> in normal times when such things are possible. And uh, I love the Arctic. I love cold places. If you'll see, most of my photographs are either in Ireland or in colder, more uh, inhospitable places. So this is, uh, you know, polar bears are very interesting because they are actually classified as marine mammals along with uh, whales and dolphins because they spend most of their life on the ocean. And so this is a, a photograph of a bear who is uh, uh, leaping from one ice floe to another. And of course, if he fell in, he'd be just as comfortable on the water as out of it. They're really quite incredible animals and unfortunately uh, endangered at the moment with uh, between hunting and climate change pressures. Uh, so. We're hopeful they can stick around and, and endure for a while longer. Um, you just mentioned there that you like cold areas and that yet we're seeing the lava <laughs> erupting here from a volcano. Very dramatic um, photos that you take. It's not the everyday acts that inspire you. Tell us about this one. So this is a photograph of a volcano in Iceland that erupted in 2010, the famously unpronounceable Eyjafjallajökull, um, which... Um, or E12 or E15, I think it was called at the time. This is the thing that grounded all the flights about 10 years ago. Oh, yes, of course. And I was lucky enough to be able to catch a flight over uh, in a rare window of the ash uh, to photograph it specifically. So this is, uh, you're seeing the, obviously the snow covered uh, glacier that it's erupting from. And then the black column is uh, the ash, which caused all the problems. And the white column is actually steam from the melting ice. So it's a, it's a great mix, those two. And of course it was photographed at night so you can see the stars in the background and you see the, uh, the glow from the lava on the, uh, on the clouds as well. And the timing of the shot as important as ever. Peter, beautiful shots and a gorgeous book. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope your, your work returns to some kind of normal in the near future. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Peter. Take care. Stunning now, photos. you can find all of the details, aren't they, just about mm. Peter's new book over on the Ireland AM Facebook page. Still to come, TV's most famous cooking duo, the Harry Bikers, are stopping by, so don't go anywhere.